Hi, everybody. This is Mr. Folly. And welcome to Podcast 5.2. We're going to draw loose dot diagrams for atoms, ions, and compounds. State the octet rule. Everybody likes to have eight. Pretty much everybody. State the exception to the octet rule. Hey, I just mentioned some of those. Single, double, triple bonds, resonance structures, molecular formulas, Vesper. Name, draw, and describe common shapes, which is going to be tough. Okay, so it's a long one, so get ready. You already looked at the time, I'm sure. All right, bonds formed by connecting the dots of Lewis structures. So what we do is we take Lewis dot structures, one, two, three, four. Carbon has four, if you remember from before you looked at your periodic table, and it shows you how many electrons it has. Hydrogen's in the one column, so hydrogen has one. And remember, hydrogen um, has just one valence electron. It only needs two to be stable. So I'm going to aim my single electrons at each other because single, single electrons form bonds. And connect the dots, la, la, la. Connect the dots, la, la. Nitrogen has five. And H3, again, H is single electrons. And then I connect the dots, la, la, la. I'd like to point out that nitrogen has two, four, six, eight. So it's happy. Carbon here has two, four, six, eight. It's happy. Now, hydrogen also counts those same two. So that's why it's covalent. And it's nice that it does that. Nitrogen is tricky. And notice how I'm pointing my single electrons at each other. Nitrogen is diatomic. And when I connect the dots, la, la, la. Connect the dots, la, la. Now, if I rewrite that, it looks a lot better. And it clearly forms a triple bond. Okay. So it's a triple bond, and it has two, four, six, eight for each nitrogen. So that's stable. CO2 is a little bit trickier. One, two, three, four. Each oxygen has six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Notice how I aim my one, two, three, four, five, six. Aim my single electrons at each other. Connect the dots. La, la. OK, now if I do this, it looks terribly ugly, right? But I can clean this up a little bit and do C, double bonded O, double bonded O. Carbon has two, four, six, eight. Action has two, four, six, eight, and so does the other one. So it's cool. Making Lewis and 3D shapes for molecular compound only. The least frequently occurring atom goes in the middle, or carbon. Put on valence electrons. Connect the dots. La, la, la. Only the central atom can break the octet rule. So the third row or below um, can be bigger, meaning it can have 10 or 12. Aluminum group can be smaller, which would be... Um, two or six and these really shouldn't be done at all because those would be um, ionic bonds and that shouldn't be drawn with Lewis dot structure. You're the master of the electron meaning you can pick them up and put them anywhere you want to. These shapes are called valent shell electron pair repulsion. Electrons are always in pairs. Electrons push each other away. That tells us the shape. Okay. I forgot to give you guys the shape sheet that I love so much. Bonds hybridize. Single electrons form bonds. Single electrons form bonds. That's why I aimed single electrons before. Electron configurations change to make single bonding electrons. This is called hybridization. So sulfur can form six bonds. So if you look at sulfur, sulfur has one, two, three, four, whoops, five, six electrons. It has six valence electrons. So what happens to sulfur is one of its electrons jumps up here. Right? So now, and one of these electrons jumps up here. So notice it now has one, two, three, four, five, six bonding spots. Okay? So that's why sulfur can form six bonds. Oxygen can't. Now notice I needed my D block right here. Oxygen can't because oxygen is in the 2S, 2P, and there's no such thing as 2D. So oxygen can't do that. So what happens when these guys bond, if I have SF6, for example, you would expect SF6, all the bonds should be the same. All the bonds should be equivalent. And they are. So what happens is, instead of having one that's bonded to S, one that's bonded to P, one that's bonded to D, they blend and they hybridize. So instead of having one S, three P's, and a D, you get S, P, three, D. And that's the hybridization that occurs. Linear is S, P, hybridized. Ionics don't do Lewis dot structures when I'm show T anyway. Mg. Two single electrons, chlorine has seven. Connect the dots, la, la, la. Okay. So this is linear, and this is SP hybridization. 
HCN. So if it's linear, it's sp hybridized. Remember how carbon goes in the middle if you're not sure where it, what does. So then I have nitrogen, which has five. Aiming single electrons again. Connect the dots. La, la, la. Oh, I can make that look better. Triple bonds. Okay. Two, four, six, eight for carbon. Oops, I didn't erase that one. Two, four, six, eight for nitrogen. Two for hydrogen. Trigonal planar and bent. So this is sp2 hybridized. So this is typically a boron or aluminum that does this. So BF3. Boron has three valence electrons. Now remember, boron can break on the small side. Break small. Break the octet rule on the small side. It only needs six. Okay. So boron has three electrons, and if I have BF3, fluorine has seven from its position on the periodic table. Connect the dots. La, la, la. Fluorine has eight. Fluorine has eight. Fluorine has eight. Boron has six, but it's okay with that. So that works for it just fine. Okay. Now on this one, I don't know which one goes in the middle, but I'm going to use as a guide what um, the formula says. So it looks like N goes in the middle. So I'll do that. And again, oxygen has six. So again, periodic table tells me nitrogen has five, oxygen has six, and hydrogen has one from what column it's in in the periodic table. Connect the dots. La, la. Oh, look, double bond. La. Connect the dots. Oxygen has two, four, six, eight. Nitrogen has two, four, six, eight. Hydrogen has six. This is it. Now count the regions of negativity. Sp2. One S, two P, that's three regions. One region, two regions, three regions. Sp2 hybridized. I don't have any pairs, right? This is empty. One region, two regions, three regions. Okay? So it's Sp2 of negativity. And this is the shape that it is. This has a 120 degree bond angle. Yes, you need to know your bond angles. These are all 120. Tetrahedral. Pyramidal and bent are sp3 hybridized as well. CH4. Carbon. Now sp3 hybridized means that I have four regions of negativity. Connect the dots. La, la, la. Four regions. Notice my regions here are four bonds. That's why it's sp3 hybridized. When it adjusts its shape, the bond angle is 109.5. This implies that it's 90 degrees. It is not. No! It's 109.5. Okay. This is what NH3 looks like. Connect the dots. La, la, la. Okay. So setting that up. Notice how this can kind of fit right in there. This is 105 degrees. Oops, that's not 105 degrees. This is 1,005, oh, 105 degrees. So this pair right here pushes the other ones down. So instead of having a bond up here, it has a pair pushing it down. And water does, oh, it's not 105, there's my problem. It is 107. Write that down for mistakes, you get it for, uh, um, for extra credit. Water. Is what water looks like and water has a 105 degree bond angle now notice 109.5 this is a little bit smaller because pairs push harder i hope you wrote that down because i did pairs push harder so that means your bond angles are small trigonal bipyramidal seesaw t-shaped and split thread hybridized so if it's sp3 d hybridized it's going to have one plus three plus one it's five regions of negativity okay Notice how this has one, two, three, four, five bonds. This one has one, two, three, four bonds, so there must be a pair here. If you have five, pair, two, three, four, there's five. Five fluorines. North, south, east, and west is where I start. And then I've got to throw another one up here, and I just put it in somewhere. Each fluorine has seven from the periodic table. I aim my single electrons. And I connect the dots. Connect the dots. La, la, la. Connect the dots. Woo! La, la. See, it has five bonds. Why can phosphorus break this? Phosphorus has ten electrons. <gasps> but phosphorus, if you look at the periodic table, is on the fourth row. 
Is there a 4D? Yes. And has a D-bike to promote into. SF4. S has six, and I have four electrons. Dut. 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 Connect the dots. La, la, la. Connect the dots. Oh, no, I have two single electrons. Single electrons are not allowed. They must bond. So as master of the electron, watch what I do. I erase them. No, I can't just erase them and just wish them away. I then take those two and I make a pair out of them. Do you see how this structure turns into this? Four bonds with a pair. And that's the deal. Bond angle here is 90 degrees. Bond angle on this part is 120 degrees. Okay. BRF3. BR has seven. Two, four, six, seven. F3. F has seven as well. Now remember, the outside electrons have to obey the octet rule. The inside ones are the only ones that can break it. So again, I have BRF3, and Loki here, I have two single electrons. Well, it's not that big of a surprise now, since I've seen it already happen with SF4. I make it two pairs and three. So that means one of these guys would turn into a pair, and it would be T-shaped. Okay. This is trigonal bipyramidal. This is seesaw. See if you knock this over? it will look like a seesaw. Octahedral square pyramidal sp3d, uh, so it's gotta have six regions. One, two, three, four, five, six. This one, one, two, three, four, five. Hey, why is there nothing? Oh, there's a pair, oh, no, yeah. SF6. F, north, south, east, west is how it starts. Did it, did it, did it, did it. Oh, I'm jumping the gun here. I only have four so far. I need to have five and six. So I'm going to connect the dots where I can. Connect the dots. La, la, la. Connect. Oh, I forgot to put my dots here. So I'm going to connect this one here. And then looking at this, you see how, this, how foolish this looks. But I would redraw that one so it clearly goes to S. Yeah. And then that one looks like it's going to someplace it shouldn't instead of directly at it. And then when you draw it with the proper 3D shape, it'll look like this. Okay. XEOF4. Wow. C9 goes in the middle. And then O. Dot, dot. F. Now, how do I know how many... Electrons go in these spots again. The periodic table tells me. If it's in the group 7A, it'll have seven electrons. If it's in group 1A, it'll have one electron. And then I'm just going to connect the dots. So xenon had eight because it's a noble gas, which rarely reacts. I admit that. But xenon does. Okay. So now I have um, three electrons. Okay. And I'd say, okay, I have three single electrons. So I would make a pair out of them. And then I've got another single electron I have to deal with. Oh, look, there's a single electron here. <gasps> look, I bet it makes a double bond. And it does. Square planar T-shape, again, we've had enough, so you can see how those things happen. So you can get X, E, F, 4. This would be X, E. This would be F. This would be F. This would be F. This would be F. And then, like that would be 4. And we'll do those in class. Double bonds, ions, and resonance. So carbon dioxide I already did, but... I guess I'm already here, so might as well do it again. O. So when I connect those dots, and then I'm going to make a double bond here, and like I did again, I'll just go ahead and erase it and make my double bonds look pretty. Okay. NO3 is going to be a little bit different. It's got a negative sign. So if it's negative, that means I get a bonus electron wherever I want it. And and O, O, O. Each action has six, and I'm going to hold on to that bonus electron in my pocket. Because I can put it wherever I want, whenever I want, but I do want to do it last. There, I've got my ends in here. And then what I am tempted to do, I've got all these single electrons. You cannot make rings. Okay, you're not going to ever make rings, so those aren't going to connect. 
what I could do is split this apart. I know it's a pair, but split it apart. Ah. So I have two electrons. I can take one of these and make a double bond here. Okay. I have this other electron. I'm going to pick it up and put it here. Okay. So I split one, put it here, put the other one over here. Nitrogen has two, four, six, eight. Nitrogen cannot break the octet rule because there's no 2D. Okay. I have a bonus electron. Remember, bonus electron. I'll put it right here. Now, to indicate that I have a bonus electron, I put it in brackets with a negative 1. Okay. Now, if you notice here, if I label these guys as Mo, Larry, and Curly, notice right now the double bond is between, I'll call this one Ned, I guess. I guess we'll call this Shemp. How about that? So, Shemp and Curly have a double bond. Shemp and Larry don't. Mo and Larry don't. Now, that's not really fair. Right? Why does Curly get the double bond and not Moe or Larry? What really happens is instead of having a full-fledged double bond, what happens is you get part of a double bond here, part of a double bond here, and part of a double bond here. So that double bondedness actually gets spread out for all of them. So it would be like having four-thirds of a bond. So instead of having two bonds in one spot, right? that would be a double bond, I would have four bonds in three spots. And that spreads out the electronegativity and resonance adds stability to that. It spreads out the repulsion of the electron pairs. I just don't have space for SO4 negative 2, and I don't want to run out of time. Structural formulas can formula the structural formula conveys the arrangement of atoms, and molecular formulas give the count. This is structural. This is a molecular. Okay, so this is structural. And if I were to give you the molecular of it, it would be C2H6. Would be molecular. Okay. Match structural formula. If you can't do this, I'll be very sad for you. CH4. There's one C. There's four H's. Woo! And H3. Look at how it matches. Wow. And you thought things got harder since kindergarten. So you can see how those things match up. The easiest part of this one. Molecular formula. Two H's. Two O's. H2 O. Two. One, two carbons, and one, two, three, four, five, six hydrogens, and an O. Review. Central atom is the least frequent. Connect the dots. La, la, la. This will take a ton of practice, and there's even more. We need to fix bond angles. Wedges come at you, dash go away. Ooh, we didn't get to see that yet. I can't wait. Four bonds is not 90 degrees. Spend some time with the sheet that you get on Monday. And hybridization tells you the regions of negativity. And that is pretty much it. So I will say toodles.